Hi everyone, this is Dave Cole. We're going to be talking about data center management. We'll actually talk about this in a, in a number of different modules, but this is kind of an introduction to, to uh, management of the data center, trying to give us a good level set as we look at some of the other topics in, in future modules. If there are any questions throughout this module, please use the question and comment box, and let's go ahead and get started. In this module, we're going to cover a couple of topics. We're going to look at some of the issues of data center management. Uh, some of the things that affect us on a, on a regular basis, and, and really this, uh, these are, are similar issues across a lot of different data centers. We're going to look at the gap between IT and facilities, and, and how these groups don't always work together, and, and maybe some things we can do to help facilitate them working together. And then we're going to look at some of the basic data center management goals, some of the things that are common across all data centers. How is the management in your data center? There was a survey that was done by Digital Realty Trust, and they asked the question, how long could it take you to find a server that has gone down? So this is, um, you know, somebody calls us on the phone and they say, uh, server ABC has gone down, and I need to go out and reboot that server. I need to go out and physically touch that server. How long could it take me to find that? Uh, surprisingly, only about a quarter of the company surveyed said they could find it, physically find that server within minutes. 32% uh, said they could find it within four hours, 22% within a day, 20% said it would take them a day or more to find that server. So if you think about mean time to repair, right, so I've got recognition that that server is down. Mean time to repair means I now have to resolve the problem. And if I know I have to go out and reboot that server, and it takes me a day to, to go out and find it, what have I done to my mean time to repair? What have I done to my overall system availability, right? So not very good management if it's taken us more than a day to physically find a server. So let's talk about the importance of data center management. IT requirements are continually outpacing facility capacity. So my IT equipment's changing every two, three, maybe five years. My facility capacity is changing maybe every 10, 15, or 20 years. I'm not putting in UPSs every other year, but I am putting in servers and, and new uh, switch gear and so on all the time. So that leads to ever-increasing availability issues. We're running out of skilled labor needed to design and operate data center facilities. Less and less people are going into the data center management field. Right? So we're, uh, we're going to run into a gap of, of skilled labor. Data centers are continually running out of the three big resources, space, power, and cooling. Right? So the continual issues that, that we face in the data center is, is resource usage, particularly in space, power, and cooling. Cost of running a data center is continuing to rise. In fact, it's rising dramatically. As the cost of energy rises, cost of operating a data center uh, rises dramatically. And the power density on a per rack basis is also on the rise. So what used to be 1, 2, and 3 kilowatts per rack is now 5, 6, 10, 15 kilowatts per rack. So we have the issues with powering that and with cooling that. So there's a lot of issues facing data center management. Uh, AFCOM uh, does a survey. Uh, they uh, show twice a year. A uh, good show to go to, by the way. Usually the spring show is in Las Vegas and the fall show is usually in somewhere on the East Coast, Orlando, or maybe in the Midwest. Uh, and they ask the survey every one of their shows, what are the greatest facility problems in data centers? And you'll see it's always space, power, and cooling, right? Sometimes cooling gets the lead, sometimes power's in the lead, sometimes space ed edges up, but it's always those three big things that we're looking at, space, power, and cooling. So what can be done about this? We've got a lot of issues in the data center. How can we address these? One of the things we want to take a look at is review our organization. How well are IT and facilities organizations working together? Are they operating in an effective manner? Are there improvements that can be made? And the other thing we can do is review some of the data center management tools that are out there. We want to identify and prioritize the information we need to manage our data center. And then we're going to start looking at some of the tools that can provide this information. So let's concentrate right now on our IT facilities organization. A lot of times we'll see in companies there's a gap between IT and facilities. It's like they're talking different languages, right? My facilities guy is talking about BTUs and amps and watts and cubic feet per minute of airflow, and, and my IT guy is talking about SNMP and TCP IP and 
web and things like that, right? It's like they're speaking whole different languages. But it's important that these two groups work together. If they don't, neither group can see the big picture. That my facilities guy may look and say, wow, my power usage has really gone up in the data center, and, and I don't know why. Well, my IT guys go, well, I know why, because I just added in 10 new blade servers and 51 new servers, right? But if they're not communicating with each other, they don't understand the big picture. So what happens is our data center ends up consuming more energy than necessary. Because what will happen from the facility side is they'll over-provision power and cooling just to make sure that when the IT guy puts in stuff, there's going to be enough power and cooling for it. When we over-provision, we end up spending more money and we consume more energy. If they don't over-provision, now I have IT applications that are at risk because I haven't got enough power or I haven't got enough cooling. So overall, we end up with a lot of inefficiencies. We end up buying additional power and cooling before it's actually needed. So it's really important that these groups work together as a team. There's always been a good overlap between IT and business, right? Because business is driving uh, the number of servers and applications that they're running. So they have to coordinate with IT. There's an overlap between IT and facilities, but sometimes it's just an overlap, right? Where we really need to be is more like this, where IT and facilities and business are all have a good overlap. Everybody's working together towards the same goal. And that goal is providing a service to our customers, whether they're internal customers or external customers. They're still our customers and we're all working together to provide them the services that they need. And it requires the applications, it requires the servers, it requires the infrastructure in order to do that. If any of those areas are weak, we're not providing a good service to our customers. So one of the things we, we run into with this IT facilities gap is it's kind of a split incentive. The IT is the one that's consuming the energy, but facilities, facilities is the one that's con, uh, paying for that energy. So the EPA, when they were studying data centers, they called this a split incentive because IT didn't have any, any reason for being more energy efficient because they weren't the ones paying the bill. Typical organizational structure in a, in a company has, uh, of course, the CEO and the board of directors at the top. Uh, what's important to know is when we get down to the IT and facility side, a lot of times the data center IT manager is going to report up through the CIO, the chief information officer, while the data center facility manager may report up through a vice president of corporate real estate or through the chief operating officer. What's important to see here is that I have IT and facilities reporting to different bosses, right? Unless the CIO and the COO are in sync as far as my data center is concerned, I may be taking the IT one direction and my facilities a different direction. A little bit more efficient organization where I'm seeing companies go to more now is putting infrastructure and IT management under the same boss, right? So now they're gonna have similar marching orders they're going to be moving in the same direction. Right? Whatever direction the CIO wants them to move in, that's the direction they're going to go because that's their boss. Now there still has to be a dashed line. There still has to be a relationship between infrastructure and corporate real estate right? because we're looking at space and power and cooling and those kind of go together. And we also need to have a dashed line over to the chief financial officer. Data centers are very expensive. Uh, paying for operating expenses on a data center are very expensive. So we need to make sure that finance is involved as well. But it's really important to get IT and facilities under the same uh, operating structure. Uh, this is a slide that, that I actually used to, uh, to give everyone a little neck stretch, right? We're going to look this way and then we're going to look that way and that way it gives us a good chance to stretch our neck. What I'm trying to illustrate here is, is uh, really some of the issues with this IT facilities gap. Over to the left, more in the blue, we see some of the uh, very traditional facilities uh, functions, right? So building maintenance and uh, building operations, space planning, electrical and plumbing, those type of things, pretty traditionally facilities. Over in the IT side, we have business services. We've got IT service management, uh, uh, service level agreements, things like that. Those are pretty traditionally IT. The middle area where we got the lighter blue and the, uh, and the black, this is kind of where their data center fits in. And this is an area where sometimes facilities does this, sometimes IT does. Who does device installs? Lots of times it's IT group, 
but in some instances, it's facilities. Who does rack provisioning? Again, sometimes facilities, sometimes IT. So it's this kind of gray area in the middle that we need to define and make sure we know what those proper roles are. So when we look at overall data center management goals, regardless of what kind of data center you're running or what kind of company, what kind of organization, there are some similar management goals. Right? We want to increase availability. Right? That's important. We want, want to keep our systems up and running. So we have to meet service level agreements in order to do that. We want to reduce risk. Those are all you know, components of availability. We also, of course, want to reduce cost. We want to increase our data center efficiency, and we want to green the data center, right? Whether we're talking about money or we're talking about environment, we would really like to reduce our energy usage because it's also going to reduce our overall cost. Upper level management's always going to want reports. They've invested a lot of money in the data center. They want to know how the data center is going. And, of course, there might be other goals depending on your organization. So what's important to know is I have some goals that I need to accomplish. What information do I need to accomplish those goals? So what metrics do I need? What metrics apply to SLAs, for example? How do I measure risk? Uh, what metrics define data center efficiency? Bottom line is how will we know if we met our goals if we don't have some metrics that we can look at? Right, some information that we can look at to know we're there. What data does management require? How often is it needed? How long does it take me to prepare the data? We did a project for, uh, it was a real-time monitoring project for a large financial institution. It was actually run by uh, another company uh, was actually running the data center. And they called us in and I said, what, what's the issue you're trying to solve? They said, well, at the fifth of every month, uh, we have to give um, this financial institution, kind of the state of the data center. So on, say, the 5th of April, they had to say, what did the data center look like in March? I said, okay. And they said, every day we're late on preparing this report, it cost us money because we have a service level agreement with this financial institution. I said, okay. I said, how long does it take you to prepare the data? They said, about six weeks. Right? So they had five days to repair a report, but it took them six days to get the data, right? or six weeks to get the data. That's because they were having to get manual data from this group and that group, and uh, you know, there was a lot of hoops they were having to jump through. So they were asking us, is there some real-time monitoring we can do that will, will speed this process? And we were able to help them get that down to a couple of weeks, uh, which still didn't meet their five-day goal, but, but we did help them considerably on, on reducing that. Right? So we need to know what information we need and where are we going to get it. So when we look at data center management, uh, let's look at the big steps in data center management. We start with planning. This is taking our business needs, translating those into data center requirements. The business guy says, hey, we need to run these applications. What does that mean from a server level and, and network level? And then we go into design. We want to design an infrastructure to meet these data center requirements. Next is operations. Consistent, repeatable processes, right? This is what ITIL is all about. Consistent, repeatable processes for running this data center. Monitoring. This is about collecting data to make sure our data center is operating as designed. And then finally, we have predictive analysis. We analyze the data that we got from monitoring and from business, and we use that as input into the planning process, and then we're back into planning, and it's a, it's a never-ending circle. What's important to know is what's in the middle of that circle is information. We need everyone to have a sole, single source of truth. If I've got the planning group is using one piece of information, my monitoring group's using some other information, operations using something else, uh, we're going to have a hodgepodge of, of information. We need everyone to be looking at the same group of information. So on the planning side, planning always starts at the business level. What applications are we going to provide and so on? What are my service level agreements? What's my growth plan? The planning side is about taking these and translating these into data center requirements. So typically I can look at my, the services I want to provide and my service level agreements. That kind of helps me to define what kind of service do I need. My data access requirements help me define my network requirements. My availability requirements help me define what kind of redundancy do I need. And finally, my current plus my future growth helps me look at the size and density of my data center. From there, we go into design. The business needs drive our data center requirements. 
But remember, we're not going to be looking just at space. Our key design criteria is going to be our total critical load in kilowatts. What's our availability and what are the density? Because that impacts my overall redundancy. It impacts the size of my power infrastructure, impacts my cooling. And then, of course, there's going to be some trade-offs. I want to take a modular approach to build my data center, but I also want to look at future demand. I want to build now to meet my future demand. On the operations side, it's all about efficiency and delivery and support of these services. I want to make sure that my IT and facilities infrastructure is stable and it's available when I need it. On the monitoring side of things, I want to maximize my data center capacity and growth. So as my demand continues to increase, I don't want to get caught without space and power and cooling to support this new equipment. So it's important that I'm looking at capacity planning. I also want to minimize my total cost of ownership. In order to do that, I want to improve my energy efficiency and I want to minimize the cost of over-provisioning. So again, this is looking at good capacity planning. And I want to maximize my availability and my business continuity. I want to make sure my systems are up and running. So I want to detect problems before they become outages. So that's where monitoring really comes into play and, and helps us moving forward. Detecting problems, but also the capacity planning side of things. It's a great definition, I think, of, of uh, capacity planning. It's not about having enough resources. It's about providing infrastructure at the right time, in the right amount, at the right price, and used effectively. So if I need 100 kilowatts of power, I could buy a 500 kilowatt UPS, right? That's going to give me enough, but it's not the right amount, it's not the right price, and I'm not using it effectively, right? I also don't want to get caught without power because then I don't have my infrastructure at the right time. So we need to take care of these things. We need to use good capacity planning to help us plan for this. So with capacity planning, we're going to start with actual data. So we're going to monitor some data, track that over time, right? either manually or ideally automatically. And then we're going to project what I think my um, um, growth is going to be. Right? So this is a pretty simple process to do this. You can do this with a spreadsheet. I'm looking at my, my growth. And then I want to see where is my available resources. So in this case, maybe I've got an available power of 90 kilowatts. Based on this, it looks like at the end of next year, the end of next fourth quarter, I'm going to be getting close to my capacity. Right? So I don't want to, to get there. I don't want to wait till the end of next year and then say, oh, I'm really close. I want to project, wow, well, it's going to take me in a year from now, I'm going to run out of resources. Uh, the problem is I can't just buy a UPS and have it here tomorrow. Right? It's not like buying a server and overnighting it. So I need to plan my infrastructure. So I may, may need to be six months in advance or maybe a year in advance. Capacity planning helps us do that. I also need to worry about um, new projects and things like that. So while my, my normal growth says I can last till the end of next year before I need more power, what if I'm going to do a great big new web project in the, the first quarter? And that's going to add another you know, 20 uh, kilowatts of power. That's going to take me over my capacity. Right? So I need to be looking at that ahead of time as well. The ITIL Continual Service Improvement Model uh, works very well in the data center. It basically goes like this. What's our vision? Right? Where, where, where would we like our data center to go? Where are we now? Where should we be? How do we get there? And then did we get there? And then we want to keep that momentum going. So the vision is our business vision, our goals and objectives. Where are we now? We have to have baseline assessments. We have to be able to say, this is where we are. I have to take some measurements. Where should we be? I need to have measurable targets. I can't have a where should I be being, you know, we want to be better. I need to know what are my goals, and these need to be measurable. And then I put processes and improvements in place. Right? How do we get there? I change my processes. And then did we get there? I want to do more measurements and metrics and see did we meet our measurable targets. So what's in it for you? Uh, let's look at a data center manager's day without the right tools. We end up manually collecting a lot of information. We walk the data center floor. Certainly nothing wrong with being out on the data center. I think a data center manager should be out on the data center floor a lot, and he should walk up and down every aisle because you can uh, notice things. You notice sounds. You notice different temperatures and, and things like that, right? So that's important, but that's not how I want to collect my information, right? I would like that information to be collected automatically if I can so I'm not missing any of it. 
Uh, it's difficult to communicate to management about data center capacity needs if I don't have the right tools in place to collect that data. So I have no metrics to measure my efficiency. So I don't know if I'm getting better or worse. So again, it's all kind of coming back to this information I need to run my data center. I have inaccurate documentation, informal processes for moving equipment around and adding equipment. Overall, I'm seen as a kind of a chaotic and unprofessional organization if I don't have the right tools. But what if I had the right tools? How's my, how's my life change? I have access to accurate, actionable data from my desk. Actionable data means data that I can do something with. Not just a lot of data, but data that's allowing me to make management decisions. I have standard procedures for equipment changes. So I'm, if I'm going to install new equipment, I've got a way to do that. I've got a procedure to do that. This accurate information gives me clear, detailed information on my current state and also the future needs of my data center. So I'm able to see where am I today and I'm also able to see where am I going. I complete my projects in less time. I have reduced errors. And overall, people look at us and say, wow, that's a really good data center team. They're a credible, professional organization. So it's all about our procedures. It's about the tools we have in place to give us the information we need to properly run the data center. If you have any questions, please use the question and comment box. And thank you very much for joining us on this module.